between between now and Thanksgiving, I'm making a side dish a day, and then I would make make a side dish. So some of them he were desserts. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he said it. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pub Stomp, a podcast about games, TV shows, movies, and pop culture in general. Every episode, we discuss topics that we find interesting. Come join our shenanigans. Hey, welcome to another episode of Pub Stomp Podcast. Today, we have a special episode. We're going to be talking to a TikTok, what was it called, content creator, Morgan. Uh, we're going to introduce him a little bit later, but today we have Mexi. Hey, hey. And Tyler. Hey. So, Tyler. Hey, and of course our star Morgan. What's up, Morgan? Hey there, how's it going? Hey, so we're gonna be going over. Uh, so I I know Morgan from way back from, I guess we we did like a startup thing together. Try to. Was that 20, 2012, 20, 2013? It was a long yeah twenty something like that. It was a long time ago. It was a while ago. Uh, yeah, and those like six months were like just a blur, man. Oh man, but yeah, yeah. So and, and I've known him for a while, and I saw him on TikTok doing some stuff, and I was like, man, this guy's putting a lot of time into this. And I, I was curious. I was like, what's the process? So now I was like, you know what? Let's talk to him on the podcast. Ask ask him some questions. Maybe he can give us some insights as to what it's like. You know, just just uh, more, more details on that. But before we dig into that, Maxi was too excited to tell us about Bro. some stuff he found out today. I don't know what is it, Maxi. <laughs> They had a Nintendo Direct, and it's just out of nowhere. They were like, "Hey, guess who's gonna be t- doing the uh, Mario movie? Chris Pratt! Bam, he's the voice!" And everybody's like, "What?" <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they it, added, "Huh?" Is it a live-action movie or a cartoon? <laughs> no. What it's is it? It's animation, by, made by Illumination, the guys who gotcha. do uh, Minions and Despicable Me. Uh, okay. Great, all those guys. But why? Yeah, the, the the cast is weird to me. <laughs> just, yes. That's, that's yes. the understatement. Yeah. <laughs> you have Chris Pratt being Mario. You have Anne Taylor Joy being Peach, Princess Peach, which she kind of looks like Princess Peach, but that's fine. Uh, you that's have. Th- huh? Was that the chess lady, right? The What's it yeah, called? Uh, chess lady. Yeah, Queen's Gambit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, we have Charlie Day being Luigi, which is like what? Like, <laughs> uh, and then we have um, also we got uh, Keenan, <laughs> yeah, Keenan, right? From Michael Key, Michael Key from Key yeah. and Peele, for uh, he's Toad. He's Toad, <laughs> yeah, dude, he's Bowser, toad. Bowser being Jack Black is <laughs> Jack like... Black is. And then Seth Rogen is DK. It's like what? Yeah. Like what? Weird. I think I think Nintendo just had a bunch of money. He's like, here, here's my COVID money, my 2020 money. <laughs> Go spend it on something. Yeah, they just fun. Are they just trying to use the names to sell the movie, or what? Is that? No, it's it's produced by Nintendo. Shigeru Miyamoto is the producer in the movie, so it's not like, oh, they just made up this movie. They're like, the man himself is like, this is who I want the voice to be. <laughs> interesting but yeah i, I don't know what huh? do you have a timeline of when it's coming out or what's I the don't remember it animation movies take a while right it's next so according to the next verge it's december 21st because this is the first i'm hearing of it and chris mm. pratt as mario seems to be a choice like i don't know but december, <laughs> know. december 21st 2022 yeah, okay so next christmas not this christmas okay yeah. cool yeah it keeps on giving man <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll I'll have forgotten by then. It'll be a surprise all over. It's like, what? Chris Pratt is doing Mario's voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you show up to the uh, movie and you're like, what? What? Uh, oh, that's weird. I don't. Know. It's amazing, man. The internet has just gone crazy over it because you're like, what? Like none of these voices make sense. Like who? Like why? Is it good? And then like, there's a confusion whether the movie is going to be animated. Or live action, because like it doesn't make sense to have Chris Pratt being the voice, right? Unless you're actually gonna have Chris Pratt. So everybody's like, "What is happening?" Well, I mean, it did for 
what is it? The Suicide Squad that did Sylvester Stallone as the the shark. So I guess they can do anything goes, man. And he all he did was like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> dumb <But>. friends. <laughs> So we'll see. I don't know. That's an interesting choice, and I hope it works because the other Mario movie, uh, live action <laughs> one. My favorite take was watching Donkey video game Donkey, like looking at the live reveal, and he's just like, it's like watching the Onion like live. What is this <laughs> yeah. casting? I thought it was fake when you showed it to me. I was like, this is fake, right? But I guess it's not. It, it reminded me of like watching. Um, you know that inter- like the interstellar meme where like it's uh matthew mcconaughey reacting to like what 80 years passed and he's just like laughing and crying and stuff like that was <laughs> that was donkey in that moment <laughs> <laughs> laughing and crying yeah that movie's that movie's rough to watch but i love it <laughs> every single time i hate it what you hate it <laughs> yes. can't you hate most again. movies though <laughs> yeah, Not a that movie's awesome <laughs> anyway it went sci-fi and then i was like ah okay whatever but for the first hour, I was hooked. Um, but and then they tried to know. do science, and that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the world was a circle or something like that. I don't know. Well, relax, bro. There's people who don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but those people don't play bocce ball, right? Because you gotta you gotta have spheres, which is what. Morgan does on his Thursday nights. Right? That was a great you, transition. Look, look, I, I, I will, I will confess. I had in my notes, I had written pickleball, which is not what bocce ball or is it bocce ball or just bocce? Yeah, bocce, bocce ball, both. Okay, which I don't know. I don't know. Tyler was super excited. I'm so sorry to disappoint you, yeah, Tyler. Yeah, sorry. It's like the bowling game. I mean, bocce yeah. school too. You know, there's nothing wrong with bocce. I've never played either of those. Yeah, so I joined like a, you know, it's post pandemic and I wanted to meet new people. So I joined a bocce, a recreational bocce league um, earlier this year. So it's like Stonewall Sports, which is an LGBT um, like uh, league. And like kickball seemed like it was a, like a lot of work and I'm just not that athletic. <laughs> and like bocce sounded pretty fun. So we're kind of like a drinking league with a bocce problem, um, which, which fits well for me. Nice. Sounds amazing. Yeah, uh, we had our our tournament game, our championship game yesterday, um, and we were were eliminated on the first uh, first game. Oh but, no! <laughs> but you know what? We had fun. It was a it was kind of a spirited game there, back and forth. But uh, I enjoyed it this year. I think I'll do it again next year. Nice, nice. And for the uninitiated, could you describe like what bocce is like, and maybe like a, I don't know, as short as you can or whatever. But yeah, so it's like it, it's this Italian game or like Italian. I don't know if it's Italian. It sounds Italian. Um, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> you've got you've got like a little white ball that's like smaller than like a cue ball, um, like on a pool table, and you throw it out in this like yard. So it's kind of like lawn bowling. And then the goal is there's um, eight balls total, two per team or of I guess four per team, and then whoever gets their like you throw them down the down the field. Whoever gets closer to the white ball gets points. So um mm, okay it's it's not like bowling where like you just throw it at pins like you can actually hit the little white ball the polino you can like knock it away and change the game so it's kind of dynamic it's kind of fun um it's actually a lot of fun so yeah that's that's kind of bocce lawn bowling meets pool kind of it sounds like curling a little bit is it is yeah. so similar to that or no um just like less ice and brooms and stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but throw, but throw, throw them and more beer yeah and more beer mm-hmm. yeah cool cool that sounds like a fun thing to play yeah so i'm sorry pickleball i have no idea what that is i'll have to look it up <laughs> but yeah. it was not that it's not that, that. <laughs> it's all good pickleball's fun though i've never played it but yeah. i know people who do tennis meets yeah. ping pong <laughs> basically so it's not like uh what is the one with the birdie uh racket oh, no no it's not that. badminton oh badminton badminton yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. is it like that uh, no. pickable no no uh, not okay. really it's more like uh ping pong on a tennis court i see i'll have to look it up because that sounds interesting it's but... with a wiffle ball oh what the <laughs> all right and there's special um like <clears throat> paddles right 
Yeah, it's a wiffle ball, and then they're like they're like big ping pong paddles. So yeah. it's like <laughs> ping pong meets tennis. It sounds ridiculous from your ball. description, but I don't know. Maybe it's it's actually awesome. Cool. I really like okay. my my, my fiance and I play it in our, our neighborhood has a court, so we play okay, all, we cool. play not all the time, but we play. Okay, cool. I, I used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods for a while, and it's like the fastest growing sport, recreational sport in the United States right now. Oh, it's huge. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. My wife and I were walking by some area in, in Seattle, and most downtown Seattle is kind of sketch. And then if you see people outside with a the table, they're usually asking for money. And we were walking by this outside. It's, it's a museum that's outside, and it's all painted by the city. And I saw two guys there waiting, and I was like, I told my wife, like, no, let's go around because they're going to ask us for money. And we went around the park, and it turns out that it's just, like, free Um uh, what's it called? Uh, like mini golf, but they have the golf courses outside. But I was just so worried, like, dude, they're gonna charge us <laughs> money because it's Seattle, man. Everybody's out to get you. But I guess not. It's free. So if you guys are in Seattle, there's a big outside park. Check it out. Is it's the nicest place in downtown Seattle that I've seen. It's not trash, no graffiti. Uh, so it's all good. Look but at anyway. your prejudice. Yeah, what? Yeah. Look, I, 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 I'm just, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just me, man. And like, like, I, like, nobody gives you anything, you know? It's like, you go out there, like, no, no, no. These guys these are going to charge me to walk. <laughs> they were like, play oh. our game for free. We've set this up for you. And then you're yeah, like, I, no. no look, like if you would have been there, you would have known what I meant, okay? <laughs> like, it looks too good to be true. It was like, too nice. It was like, this is too nice. They had lawn chairs. You could just sit there on the nice grass, like, just look out to the, to the water is nice how could it be free i guess somebody's paying taxes <laughs> so right? seattle. <laughs> seattle yeah seattle's paying a bunch of taxes for that anyway anyway enough of that pickleballs and bocce and not paying for mini golf but oh, well, i will want to on the pre-roll we said that uh pickleball was for old people but as i look up bocce all i see is old people play this game too. <laughs> So you you see the through line of the sports that I like to play. <laughs> I'm not easy. hating. I'm just saying. There you go, man. Hey, man. Low impact. You know, take it easy. Yeah, the picture you, you shared is a guy. <laughs> yeah. I think the... ultimate frisbee people also drink, but that ultimate yeah. frisbee is not chill. No. No. Yeah, so... that's kind of rough. See, like yeah. bocce, I get really good after like one seltzer in, and then like between one and a half and two seltzers is when i go really really bad so you have to like you know <laughs> oh yeah to moderate it that's the general rule <laughs> yeah i take one drink like... so that i talk on the podcast but i stop at one so i don't say stupid stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> there we go <laughs> oh man rule of thumb just one one and done all right so tiktok is our topic kind of like the bigger uh, i guess overarching theme here um and TikTok came out of seems like it came out of nowhere last year, right? Twenty twenty was the year of TikTok. Uh, yep. I asked Mexi to look to look into this. I don't know if he was ready. If he's not ready, <laughs> put him under the, the bus. Mexi, <laughs> where did where did TikTok come from, and why is it so big, and what was it before? Tell us, man, because I I do look. So TikTok TikTok came from an app in China. So it's it's a Chinese app made by ByteDance. And mm-hmm. the app in China is called Douyin, Douyin, something like like I'm not the best, but we're trying. But pretend I said that right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's basically how you see it, right? You just send a video yeah. or a picture, and then like you, just, everybody's like dancing and doing stupid things, and you know some people get paid for it. And then around the same time in America, there was this app that was very uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Um. Politic- not politicized, controversial. Yeah, controversial, ass, yeah. Yes, it's called Musically. Uh, because there's a lot of kids doing a lot of weird sexual things on Musically. <laughs> 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 and people were like, hey, you know, let's, let's, maybe that's not okay. Cause, but it's okay on TikTok, apparently. You know, I digress. But so at that point, around the same time, Musically is pretty popular. But then TikTok's like, or Yin, or by dance, whoever you want to refer them as. They're like, we need to go to America because that's where all the money's at. And then, so they come into the market. They're not doing super hot. And at this same time, Musical.ly is kind of like, people are like, down with Musical.ly, there's child pornography there. And then 
they saw it as an opportunity to purchase musically and then they merged the user bases and then it became this mega conglomerate of weird dances on the internet i would say <laughs> <laughs> and you get tiktok yeah. and then you know things are good things are fine and then um 2020 2019 towards the end of 2019 2020 you know something happened around the world <laughs> you know? <laughs> people were stuck at home and then TikTok just blew up. It became like the third largest uh, brand in 2020, uh, right after Zoom and Peacock. Weirdly enough, um, Pe- Peacock the the streaming. Yes, uh, the streaming. Oh app. really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yep. Fun fact for you guys. See, I did my there homework. You, you thought I yeah, did, I think so. but I did. <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't sure, man. But yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> We're all learning here. Um, and so. You know, people are doing their their things, and I think part of the reason that it got super big is part of the controversies that came with it, and part of the what TikTok offered is like two minute videos at most, I think, and you can correct us on that later, Morgan. But basically, you have really short videos. You could go straight to the point where you can be like, "Here, look at me dancing. Hey, look, I'm a hot girl promoting my OnlyFans," because apparently OnlyFans is also really popular. But you know what? We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> you know maybe one day we can get an only fans uh, influencer yeah. here oh man that'd be awesome i have so many questions anyways <laughs> oh that's because you have so many questions that's why awesome. <laughs> right right yeah that's right. right gotcha <laughs> i have a lot of questions all right i'm genuinely curious about how the internet works anyways uh got super popular it's been banned in other countries like india and pakistan i believe uh Trump also at one point where like was like, you know what, we need to ban TikTok because they're spying on our children, because they found <laughs> out that if you looked into the app's code, it was kind of like, what you doing on your phone? And TikTok was like, hey, I got this all this information, and I'm sending it back to the motherland. And yeah. People weren't happy with that. You know, so right. there's a lot of like things that happened during 2020 that was like, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So. Right. And then, right. you know, you get everything else. Like Facebook was like, I got Instagram and I'm going to make Instagram reels and da, 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 da. And here we are. 2021. Yeah, everybody has TikTok <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But it's, uh, I think TikTok is still king. Uh, the content is highly curated. I think that's the, that's the key with TikTok. And that's what made it really big. I think that I was reading that. Algorithm. Like, like they, they would they would only show people good videos. If they had people like just watching the videos. If they, if they sucked, they wouldn't even show up. Like that's just how, that's how it grew. Really? So big. And I think now the machine's just going. So there's a line from one of my favorite kind of TV shows, Silicon Valley. And like one of the first episodes, like the guy is like, you give good algorithm. And I think that's what makes TikTok amazing is mm-hmm. it's algorithm to like know about you and match videos that, that you like. And yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's crazy how like at first when I started using TikTok at first it showed me some stuff and then Maxi and I started sharing videos and then all of a sudden my content started shifting and I was like, what <laughs> is going on? It's like so weird because now my content is totally different. But I was going to so ask nice. if you two are actually on it because I didn't because I'm not I on TikTok not. on purpose. I've been trying to avoid it, but uh, Morgan's are really good. So it's shifting my perspective. But anyways, I, I tried to avoid it Mine's because it's, it's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For it's like crack, man. Like it's just so That's what addicting. I'm afraid of. It, yes. Yeah, d- you you will be on it. Like if you don't, it just knows it will learn about you, and then it will know what you like. And it's right. like like Mexi said, like a mini video, just quick like dopamine hits, and it's like nonstop. It is it is. Don't. The it's good, but it's like. Go ahead. The, the number of times I've fallen asleep or like tried to go to sleep and then I'm like, oh, let's get on TikTok to like kill some time. And then all of a sudden it's one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got, I've got to work the next day. This is hard. Yeah, but. Let's but be man, real but, though. All the best memes are on TikTok now. Mm-hmm, like yeah. all the best ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like meme. I miss out a little bit. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll share the TikToks with yeah, you. Yeah, share me the good ones. <laughs> I think the benefit too, it's so international. Like before like the meme thing was is a very like regional thing, like the US I think dominated more memes now. And then now that I'm doing like TikTok and Instagram reels, like I see like memes from other places in the world and they're hilarious, man. They're they're the best. That's I think yeah. that's too like the global reach they have is 
amazing. Right, right. Definitely. Man, but now that fall is around the corner and skipping we are October. Cause, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that fall is here. Yeah, hey, there we go. Yeah, now that fall is here. It's the first skipping, fall Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and skipping October because that's for spooky stuff, which we'll have other stuff later. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. So that's what that's what that's when I saw I saw Morgan's videos on Instagram uh, on his on the what does it call him like the daily stuff the, the, the Snapchat cup stories Stor- yeah the Snapchat stories. you got to yeah. cross post you got to got to drive yeah, that audience yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah and I was like but but the, it doesn't show you the whole video so I was like ah oh, I have to get on TikTok to watch it so I went that's over and annoying, I was by the way. yeah but it but it, it made me move over which is Instagram's fault i guess i don't know why they yeah anyway yep. so i started watching his post there and i guess we'll go into the first question of the interview here and so the question is what inspired you to start creating because the first video you made was not a cooking video the second one was so what was the inspiration to start creating cooking videos okay so yeah i so cooking is one of my passions i i i've always enjoyed cooking um and and you know making food and everything um, like I don't want to get too deep, but like it's kind of like a love language, right? Like people that I care about, I like to make them meals and food, and like that's that's kind of fun. Plus, like last year, twenty twenty was you know a pandemic, everybody was locked down, so it was kind of a way to flex your hobby a little bit. And I decided that yeah, I should try. Well, before before like the whole TikTok thing, I think it was probably about this time of of like a year ago i had drank a lot of wine on my couch and (laughs) decided and was like i don't i don't know what what can i do so i like drunk morgan decided to um order a whole bunch of like magazine subscriptions like i think i got like five different magazine subscriptions uh coming to me um only paid 35 dollars for it so that was that's pretty good um and then inside of these were all these like recipes and i was like okay I've invested this money to, to like, to get these recipes. Like, what should I do with them? So it was the first video that I did was like a Williams Sonoma green bean casserole. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why don't I just try like making a side a day? So it was the end of, it was the end of October. We were pushing into November and I was like, let's, let's do it. So, um, yeah, kind of like, uh, some wine fueled impulse purchases that, created magazine subscriptions and recipes. And then um, I, you know, kind of TikTok being, being perfect for like a lockdown. So those two kind of came together and that's how I started this little, little project. So I did uh, my, my kind of shtick here was 20 uh, between, between now and Thanksgiving, I'm making a side dish a day and then I would make it, make a side dish. So some of them were desserts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he said it. <laughs> some of them were a dessert. Some of them were side dishes. But uh, in all, um, November first through the twenty fourth of last year, I made twenty four different dishes and posted them all on TikTok. Nice, nice, awesome. Yeah, that I that's that's pretty that's pretty ambitious. But that every every good idea is fueled by alcohol, right? So <laughs> you gotta drink yeah. a little and get get creative. <laughs> that's that's funny. It, I'm really uh, glad I did it. It was fun. <clears throat> yeah, it, it looked like a lot of work. So the the next question is like, how or well, what is the prep like? Because it's the first one. It, it wasn't didn't seem too bad, but as you kept going, it kept getting harder. And I was like, dude, how much time are you putting? Because you're only recording for one minute, right? But you there's I I've I mean, when you cook, it's not a minute. You cook for a lot longer than that. Yeah. So <laughs> so next you're saying that like the they're short videos. So back in the day back when i was doing it you were limited to like one minute right and now now they're like you can do up to like three minutes which i'm like oh my god that's such a long time when i'm watching a TikTok. Yeah. but um so a minute's all you got and you have to tell like a story right in in that entire minute mm-hmm. um and yeah so you know like i just pulled up the notes app i listed out all these different recipes that i wanted to try and like tried to source them um and then basically towards the end there it was like every night i would come home from work um and i would i would make a side dish or i'd I'd make the tiktok and so make the food so that included like setting up you know i had like my iphone on a tripod to to do it um 
that was that was a lot of fun um and then like so the the filming thing right like when you when you when you cook right it can be anywhere from like 30 minutes if it's something simple to like an hour and a half if it needs a long time in the oven so you know mm -hmm. i'm a lot of times i'm pushing like late into the night to, to oh, do it man. and then then i have to like get the content off my phone and then bring it to my mac and then i was using imovie and then like because i'm cheap i didn't oh. want i didn't want to like buy final cut pro to put it in like a uh, portrait orientation so then i'm having to use like online converters to move things around in different file formats so it was gotcha. it was a it was a lot like the workflow was probably not streamlined and i'm sure there are people who um like know it better than i do i didn't shoot natively in the app i, I used um just like my 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 iphone's camera app oh i see i see oh man that's intense and did you ever like try like try recipes before or was, was it all like first cuts like this is what we're making and if it doesn't come out it better come out yeah um that was kind of the fun part about this is that i didn't want to like i didn't want to be like a test kitchen and like uh -huh. try these things before i wanted to, to try it i think i think that's the magic of tiktok right like some things are good and some things are bad and, and like it's it's like that is the fun of tiktok so all of my everything that i did was like first was was the first time i did it there That's was impressive. One, there was one weekend where I filmed three different throughout the day, three different um, uh, dishes throughout the day. But, but then towards the end of the uh, uh, towards the end of the month, it was like one a day. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's, that's impressive. Fun fact: I'm wearing a different shirt in each different in, in each TikTok. That's kind of like my Vanna White moment. <laughs> I think uh, Mexico was commenting on that. <laughs> it was. Oh well, one of the things that was really like awesome to see was like your loops because like where you loop how you loop your tiktoks or they, like they start where they end kind of i was yeah. just like this is the best thing ever like because it just you can just keep watching it yeah perfect <laughs> loops are awesome yeah that was the fun part that was also really stressful towards the end right because like i have a mouthful of something and i have to like you know like swallow or like chew this like food that's in my mouth and then swallow it and like clear my mouth so that I can do the intro in under five seconds. And it's actually tough to do, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. I like food. So I did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it for the food. Yeah. Did it for the food. That was my oh, next man. question. I was like, how do you do that? That I, I didn't even thought about like, you just do your outro into your intro. Like that's, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you film the final scene, right. Or the final, final cut. And then you like, then you make the cut in between, like putting the fork down and then um, leading into the, like the intro. Um, and then like, this is just a very technical thing. Like I struggled to like color grade, like the, the initial intro okay. with like the ending intro. Um, like iMovie would like to help me out quite a bit. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. I see. And so, this is intense. Cause I done the Drew mentioned earlier, I do the editing for everything that we do. Is it like, was it a challenge to like stitch images, like the videos together for you? Like, how do you decide which are the important bits to show and things like that? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think, so my kind of workflow was like film everything. So you have all the content that you need. Um, I used to like try to fragment, like start start filming and stop filming during different things. And then I realized if I just like let the camera go, it was actually easier to manage. So then like after I got all the, all the content, I would go into like post-production and then watch all of this content and then like get like five second cuts of the different activities. Like, and then I begin to use those different cuts to tell the story. So right. I've got like an hour and a half long, video and then i like distill that down to like i don't know 35 second um still or, or like cuts and then and then i massage like the timing of those to like tell the story i got smarter as i went through it and i tried to like at the beginning i tried to narrate live what i was doing um mm -hmm. and i found that just didn't work well and then uh, towards the end or towards i guess the middle i ended up just like doing a voiceover at the end which was a, like so much more successful to to get that content. Yeah, I 
I feel like that's what a lot of people do now. It's just the record. It, it's not, you kind of have to know ahead of time what you kind of w- are going to say. But I think uh, voiceovers work a lot better because it's much more cohesive. The story is more cohesive, right? Because you already put the scenes together, so you're speaking over the story. Exactly. Like you, cool. you know the story that you want to tell, like the final product, instead of trying to create the story on the fly, like run and gun. Nice. And in terms of gear, you said you used um, just your iPhone camera and then a tripod, and that's that was pretty much it? That was it. I used a ring light for the, um, the intros. Um the yeah the intro scenes um I used a ring light and then my mac running um iMovie man that's that's pretty that's pretty uh i guess i it's a, not not a lot of stuff that you can get going with that i could tell the there was good lighting on the intros cuz it was always always looked pretty good I, I appreciate that you know so yeah. so here's the thing about tiktok like tiktok is super fun and if you want to do the dances right you can just put your phone up and do them and it's fun and i think just how different people consume TikTok, right? I think millennials consume it different than Gen Z's and there's like just different content bases. And so this was something that I wanted to do just to have, just to have a lot of fun. And I'm like, I struggle sometimes being a creative person, um, but I really, but I also like really enjoy the technical side of things. So this was a lot of fun to like, let me be creative from like that cooking perspective, that culinary perspective. And then, but still like feed the appetite that is the technical part of me. That's like, Oh, I need to get this down to under a minute. Like here's the different settings that I'm using my camera and export and all that stuff. So even though I say it was a lot of work, it was a labor of love. Right. Right. I mean, you wouldn't have done it because I, I, I'm impressed like 20, like 25 sizes every day doing, knowing what I know from doing the podcast, it's a lot of work. Like in it's like three of us here and you were just doing it all solo. So, and you were actually making food, right? You have to make something that you can eat. So. <laughs> there were but a lot like, of good ones. Some of them, yeah. the, so there's one where I made like a cranberry tart and I thought I would like simplify the recipe and I, I did simplify the recipe and then like the crust of this tart fell. Um, <gasps> and which which was which was like, so to get back to, I think Maxi's question earlier is like, did I, were these all live? And they absolutely were. So like, I'm only making that tart once. And so if you go back and watch that, like you see me like take the pan down and like, it looked beautiful for like a hot second. And then the next scene, it's just like a crumbled mess. <laughs> I just watched that as you said it. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so were, was there any recipe that didn't make the cut or everything you made basically became content? Everything that I made became content. Some nice. of the recipes were really great. Um, and I enjoyed eating them and some of them were not super good, um, that I would need to like try the recipe. Those, the stuffed onions were good in my mind. Um, but they did not turn out well at all. <laughs> at, <Yeah>. all. <laughs> at all. Oh, <laughs> hey man, thanks for being honest. Cause everything looks good from my perspective. I mean, you ate it, you, you took a bite and you did not flinch. So I guess <laughs> you fooled me. Thing. You put a filter on anything and it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I have, a, I have a question about one of your recipes. Go for it. How, what or how did you come about with the pineapple Jello salad? <laughs> okay, so so I'm glad you asked that. So, like I said, part of these were some like recipes that I found in these magazines, and then as I as I started like doing this kind of project, I realized that to me, like food, like connects people. And when I started thinking about Thanksgiving side dishes, like I get to a list of like 14. And I realized like, crap, I've still got like 10 days to go, like 10 different (laughs) recipes to go. So I started thinking like, what, what does like Thanksgiving mean to me? And in my family, um, every year my mom makes this like pineapple jello salad and it's just like canned pineapple rings, lime jello that you freeze. And like, it's very like mid century and 1960s kind of cooking where you're like, this is really kind of kind of food. But like, it's not Thanksgiving to me without that. So that one's a particular like family recipe. Um, and yeah, so as a way kind of like to connect with people, I wrote to um, my grandmothers and was like, hey, what are some recipes that you like? And I was able to incorporate some of those in, in like the later part of, of the uh, series. So they're family recipes. It was a way for me to connect with my family that, you know, they're not going to be around forever. And I want to kind of like connect with them. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and on that vein, I guess since you touched on the Thanksgiving stuff, um, I guess Maxi and Tyler, what is your guys' Thanksgiving like? You, I'm assuming you guys do partake on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> I don't no. want to assume. <laughs> Corporate <laughs> holiday. I'm not partaking this. The largest uh, food holiday in the United States. Yeah. Uh, you guys turkey family, not turkey family? Oh, man. My family goes ham. Like, literally. But like, uh, <laughs> We have, like, nice. turkey. We do ham. I do, my brother does, like, ribs, mashed potatoes, green beans. Like, it's just, like, a whole, like, buffet of food. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh yeah, my, mine's pretty similar. Not not the barbecue so much. I'm kind of jealous of that one. But uh, we do ham, turkey. My my biggest thing is the stuffing. Uh, I usually yeah, make dude. stuffing for my family's um, or my my friends' giving, and then I I devour the stuffing at my family's. Nice. Man, that's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, we what don't about you? we. So in my family, it's a little bit different. I mean, you guys, Mexican American families are a little bit different, right? But we do that whole turkey thing growing up. Uh, but my wife and I started doing tamales during Thanksgiving instead of turkey because it's just a lot of work to do turkey for two people. So we make we make so we're doing it for the last like four years. So tamales during during Thanksgiving, but we do do the stuffing without the turkey because I, I I gotta have the stuffing, man, and. She doesn't like the cranberry stuff so much, so I make that for me. Uh, but that's just pretty simple. Not not a lot of no barbecue, uh, <laughs> I'm which I'm jealous now. Yeah, tamales are a lot of work too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, but it's like you don't have to eat it all in like, like the turkey okay. is like this big bird, right? And then yeah. you like eat it or everything. go. Right? Yeah, eat it or go, and then it, no, it's just like we tried it, and then like. After two days, like I'm kind of done with turkey, like you know, I just this is, but we still have like half a turkey left, so <laughs> yeah, right. so that we started doing that. But if it's a big family, I think might want to be over with my family this year, so uh, maybe we'll do turkey. I don't oh, know. So you need to make green bean bundles. That was the video that kind of made me go famous. Yeah, I, think, I, I, think I saw that. All three of you should should make it this year. So <laughs> there's this, uh, so it's a family recipe, like super family recipe. They're called green bean bundles, and um, it's basically like canned green beans wrapped in bacon with a brown sugar garlic sauce on them, and you bake them, and they're just so, so good. Um, so that was the video that for me that went viral. I had like 180,000 views on it, um, which is like just so many people saw it. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, awesome. no, and that's, I was going to – that was the next that was the next question. So – what what was it like? I guess did you go viral instantly or when you posted that that was the four, day fourteen right so you posted the yep. video you went to sleep and then you woke up and then bam a hundred thousand videos or what was it like a slowly crawl up to a hundred a hundred k a hundred fifty k it was uh, oh. it was a uh, I think like the first I don't know eight hours or so not a ton of views um, what ended up happening Newsweek actually picked up uh, picked it up and I think that's what drove a lot of traffic mm. to it. Um, and then, so it was like it skyrocketed up to like between 140 and 160. And then over the past, you know, 10 months or so, it's gained another 2,000 or 20,000 views, something like that. So, um, yeah, so we're now like 180 plus on it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, that's pretty cool because, man, we, we post TikToks on our account for posts. I mean, we get like on a, on a good on a good post is like 500 views which is yep. still like okay if you think about it like 500 yeah. people saw something that you posted that's a lot of people but in terms of tiktok it's like psh, bush league right you gotta <laughs> get like 5k for you to be like even noticeable right so but it's it's a different world but yeah that's pretty cool green green bean bundles i don't know if i will try it i'm not a big <laughs> <laughs> green bean really? I mean I might I might do it for the memes you know you had me a brown yeah. sugar yeah brown sugar <laughs> so it's funny because okay green bean <laughs> bundles it's hard to say the word bundles fast and then hit all the letters in there so a lot of people thought that I was saying green bean buttholes <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why it went viral <laughs> and that's why it went viral <laughs> yeah there we go oh man yeah but I guess you have bacon in there and then sugar so and garlic so i guess 
I mean, like, yeah, I like I guess most it, I guess of those things. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could work. I could make it work, yeah. It did look, yeah. look pretty easy to do, too. You did it one minute, right? Yeah, I did it in a minute. Just, it's easy. Yeah, just, yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. I have a question about your gear in this one. Because I'm looking at it. Did you buy, like, that induction cooker specifically for TikTok, or is that something you just use regularly? So, I'm a gearhead. I have a ton of kitchen gear. Um mm-hmm. I used to work at Williams Sonoma, so I got a whole bunch of stuff that you know I, I have and or need and or want. Um, <laughs> so that induction cooktop is super great. Um, I'm a fan of induction cooking; it's so much more efficient than gas or electric or whatever. So, um, and it's portable. So I use I chose to do the cooktop because it's just like faster and more responsive than my like electric stove here in my apartment. Um, so it's game changer in my opinion from a cooking just like from a cooking appliance my next kitchen will be induction only okay oh really yeah i always thought it was weird like there's no like heat source it's just like <laughs> science and then Magnet. bam it gets hot <laughs> yeah i know right yeah, yeah like for me the science is super cool behind it right like it's it's an electromagnet right that vibrates the molecules of a ferrous metal to create friction and that's yeah. what causes your pan to heat up um so it's like super fast. In other words, like like when you want to apply heat, you want it to be fast. When you want heat to stop, you want it to stop. And yeah. that's what's really nice about induction cooking. Uh, so you get the control of the fire without the fire. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I always thought I was like, ah, I don't want to. That sounds like voodoo magic. I don't want to do it. But <laughs> everybody, everybody uses them. So uh, and it, they're safe, right? Like if you touch it, it's not hot. I guess it would be after a while. Um, it gets hot because like the pan itself gets hot, but you could literally put a piece of paper between the cook surface and the pan and turn it on full like full power, and the 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 paper is not going to catch on fire. It's, uh, witchcraft, witchcraft! Uh, no, 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 no! See, this is, like, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, there you go. We're we gonna cut oh, that from man. the podcast. Uh, I don't want people, I don't yeah, want don't. People <laughs> Then we get banned. Yeah. Like yeah. The crate challenge. Oh man, that's that's cool. I'll just I'll just nerd out about on on induction like a little bit more. So like for older people, I think it's a really great like way to have, like have a heat source in your house if like if they want to cook something because they can turn off after like forty minutes or something so that you don't have like pans that are left on the stove and can like catch on fire and things like that. So from like mm. an elderly person's perspective, I think that's uh, kind of a cool technology. Okay, cool, cool. I'll, I'll check it out. We <laughs> recently got a convection oven, and at first I was like, "We already have an oven. We don't need a con- like a mini convection oven." But that thing has been like, it's so much faster. Just cook, just throw stuff in there. Anyway, it's still, I just it's still, did, it's, what? I just did the same thing when we bought our oven. I was like, "Well, what yeah. do we need an oven with a fan for?" That's, that yeah. doesn't make sense. But and we we cheaped <laughs> out. But next time maybe. <laughs> Yeah, no, it no, makes, it, 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 yeah. Makes magic happen. Makes your it's uh, better. It makes things crispy. Yeah, it makes yeah. things crispy. And I was like, that sounds like BS. Like, that sounds like marketing. Wait, it works. Don't it you works. have an air fryer? Uh, I do not have an air fryer. No, no, Tyler. Oh, oh I do Tyler. have an air fryer. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just an air fryer. That's what it is. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what it is. Okay, that makes sense. That makes A sense. convection <laughs> oven is an air fryer. That makes but sense. But it makes damn good chicken nuggies. Oh, there you go. Well, That's what I house. use it for. Chicken nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> well, about the tendies. The tendies. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, cool. cool. <clears throat> you have another. You have another question. You can go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just gonna ask. Like, was there something that inspired you? Like, outside of like, were you watching also other TikToks and you're like, oh, I want to try to do this like they do or anything like that? Yeah, there were a few TikToks that kind of like stood out to me. Um, like there was one one guy, um, Nick Giovanni. He's on TikTok. Um, he was on like Master Chef, and so like TikTok's like, oh, you like cooking? Here, take a look at Nick. So I'm like, okay. Um, so he was pretty good. Um, the Pasta Queen was also another one, and then <laughs> cooking with Shireen. Like those are kind of some some of the big ones that were out there at the time. And I'm like, I can do this. I like to cook. Let's, uh, yeah, let's let's do that. So those those are the ones that kind of inspired me, like made the connection for me to go from like being on the couch with all these recipes to <laughs> actually making them. Yeah, nice. Because nice. I remember seeing like 
a while there, there was like TikTok was pushing food really hard on their yeah. platform. I was just curious if you're part of that. Nice. Um, yeah, like I'm curious if they're going to do that again this year, right? Like things have changed a little bit. People aren't as home as much, but like when people, when it does get cold and people are in, so like in a few weeks, um, I wonder if there'll be more more food content kind of pushed towards people algorithms. So uh, the the other question is, I guess we kind of skipped around the food stuff around, but uh, I'm curious, what was your favorite recipe? And also I'm going to ask the guys this. So. Like it's Morgan. I guess it's harder to ask you because you made it and then you also ate it, but let's just in terms of like eating it, like taste wise, which one was the best one that you liked? Yeah. So as I kind of look here at all of my TikToks, um, one of my favorites was like the German pretzel and sausage stuffing. Um, that was super good because it's kind of a, a take on, on, well, stuffing that's kind of unique. Yeah. And then um, I think one that was like most sentimental to me was like the beef jerky. That was one that it's my grandmother's recipe. I had to go buy a dehydrator. So that was like a Craigslist. Uh, I guess that was a oh. Facebook marketplace, like purchase nice. at a Wendy's parking lot. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> um, nice. But the beef jerky was, was probably, those are, those are probably my top two. Nice. Nice. Tyler, did you have a favorite recipe? That you know, I was, you I was actually just going to say that one. <laughs> I, I really like the stuffing one, the oyster dressing, and then the uh, German pretzel stuffing. Uh, I like both of those. Because it kind of relates to my, that's my thing w with my Friendsgiving. Like I said, uh, I've yeah. kind of evolved my stuffing over the years. And the last oh. one I did was a ghost pepper. Well, I, I do a sausage stuffing. The last pep the last one I did was a ghost pepper sausage stuffing. And I think that was a hit uh, this last year. So I, I like unique stuffing. So I, uh, I like I guess you could say that one was box. pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That nice. sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Uh, Mexi, did you have a favorite recipe? I like potatoes. I don't like bread. I like <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah, so that's always a good a good one to pick. Mm -hmm. So for for me, it's the Jello salad, mostly because it was like something <laughs> I've never seen. It's just like it it looks so simple. I could make that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't. Every time I try to cook, it just doesn't come out the same way. <laughs> but I could, I could, I could handle that one. I thought it was I a know. play on like uh, cranberry. You know how you get the cranberry? Yeah. Like that's what it reminded me. That's why I was curious, and I asked. I was like, "How did they come up with that yeah. one?" Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I asked him the same thing too when we talked about like, like where did that one come from? But yeah, to me, that was the mo the one that caught my attention the most. I I did not. Yeah, the green bean bundles did not uh, face me, but that one is like, oh my goodness, this is this has to be the next yeah. trend, the Jello. Yeah, but Just I guess make I'm sure, wrong. Make sure you use uh, canned canned pineapple. Um, pineapple is one of these cool fruits that actually has an enzyme that breaks down protein, which is mm. in Jello, right? Gelatin is a protein that makes it jiggly. Um, so you uh -huh. can't use fresh pineapple; you got to use the canned stuff. So don't Ooh, try to be fancy nice. and <laughs> find it'll a, just find make it watery. Yeah, it, it won't set up. Oh, I see. Nice tip. Yeah, I I guess that makes sense because canned pineapple doesn't make your tongue hurt, but real pineapple does. So. Absolutely, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a food nerd, so I know I know a lot about this stuff. Nice, nice. <clears throat> cool. Well, I guess that leads us to our next question, man. Are you gonna do it again? Uh, I know, put, know. Putting on the spot. I know, man. Putting on the spot. Yeah, you're not the first person who's asked me that this year. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a fun time. I don't. I don't think I'm going to do it this year. It's not. A, okay. Not in the cards for me. I think instead, what I'm going to do is do the 12 days of Christmas cookies, and actually uh, do that this year. So I've already planned out 12 different recipes that I want to do in the month of December. Okay. Which um, is super. Well, 12 is a lot more manageable than 24. Um, yeah. And um, I like Christmas cookies. So plus, I'll be able to give them away as gifts. So it's kind of like a twofer. So uh, <laughs> keep your eyes open for the 12 days of Christmas cookies. Okay, okay. cool. Because you did cocktails uh, last year, right? You're going to do cookies this year? Yeah, cocktails was, yeah, that was because it was a lot of work to do. <laughs> Five <laughs> days of, of sides. 
Yeah, no, no, no. I understand, man. Uh, I was like, ha, uh, that's a lot of stuff to do. But cookies, you know. That's Everybody Spanish loves cool. cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Well, are you gonna upgrade the gear or same same setup, same like just you, you already got the the pipeline going, whatever it is that you're doing? Yeah, I upgraded to the iPhone 13 Pro today, Ooh. so um, Ooh. yeah, some good. Uh, that was a, that was like a minor flex there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that'll be that'll be the equipment. I'll probably do a same workflow. Um, I don't think it'll be good. Um, you guys should send me your favorite Christmas cookies recipes, and I'll see if I can incorporate them into. Uh, into my TikToks. Ooh. Yeah, dude, I, I like sugar and carbs, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a favorite. I'll just eat everything. Yeah. <laughs> you're happiest when you're eating carbs. Yeah, exactly. No, you that's cool. Figure that's out cool. how to do a potato bread cookie. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I like potatoes and I like bread. Okay. <laughs> a gnocchi cookie. Sh- I could just... Yeah. Oh man, <clears throat> cool and. And I guess that we have a wild card question, which is we do a lot of movie reviews. Actually, yeah. we do only movie reviews and TV shows. So the wild card question for you is like, which movie do you think everybody should watch? And yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> tough question. Um, so I'm a big nerd at heart. My favorite movie is Star Trek: First Contact. Um, great movie, 1996 like the peak of star trek culture um i think everybody should see that um the second one would be like the sound of music so basically those two movies describe my personality to a t um yeah i uh those are like my top top two movies okay uh, is the sound of music the one with the lady with a meme? <laughs> yes. You know which one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the meme. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. it's an older movie, right? But I, I, I know the meme. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's always around during Christmas time. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, well, I guess we'll, we'll have to. I am not. I don't watch Star Trek, but I, I guess we recommend it. You know, my well. Might have to give it a shot. Well, I'm a Trekkie, so like it's pretty good. I guess I will say the one movie that I'm excited for to see in theaters is going to be um, Dear Evan Hansen. They made the musical, like the Broadway hit musical. They uh, adapted it for the big screen, so I'm excited to see that coming up next month. Good, Dear Evan Hansen. Okay. Has Ben Platt. Good ben Platt. Yep. You know what's up? Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I like musicals. <laughs> yeah, Max is a musical. He, I don't like musicals, and we, I've watched a lot of musicals. I've met my musical quota for the last for the for the next five years. Uh, but I, I've, great, I've gotten man. I've gotten used to them now. It's because you know, you guys know, I, it's hard for me to understand the dialogue when they're singing. <laughs> but that's just a personal problem. That's just like I said. <laughs> cool well we don't want to keep you all night morgan do you want to quickly tell us like your socials like where do people find your tiktoks and uh follow you and you know all the good stuff yeah so mr nelson 06 on tiktok and on instagram that's my that's how you reach me nice and you'll and we're gonna be looking forward to your uh i guess 12 co- co- christmas cookies recipes 12 days of in... christmas cookies yeah there we go awesome awesome well thank you so much morgan and with that, we're out. Peace. Thanks for having me. See ya. Yeah. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please give us a star, heart, or leave us a review. You can follow us on Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube at Popstomp Podcast. That's P-U-B-S-C-O-M-P-O-D cast. For more episodes, go to anchor.fm slash Music provided by 99 Lives. Credits are in the episode description. <laughs>